So here's what that looks like. We're going to plot cavity pressure cycle integral, the area under the cavity pressure curve that we know tends to correlate with part dimensions. So we'll, we'll, we'll plot that against the dimensions. Here's our experimental condition number one, our low hold pressure, low fill speed, low melt temperature, gives us our smallest part. And it also has the lowest area under the curve. Uh, condition number six here is our high fill speed, high hold pressure, high melt temperature, gives us the most pressure inside the cavity and our biggest parts. And when what we notice is that there we got a nice kind of straight line fit here. There's a general correlation. And we're able to put a correlation band around this data. And what this correlation band allows us to do, it gives us, it tells us, can we predict part quality with our cavity pressure data? And when we've got a good correlation like this, it says we can. If our cycle integral is, say, 10,000, then our part dimension is going to fall somewhere between 101 and 102 millimeters. It allows us to tell with a, cer with a degree of certainty what the part dimension is. So we've put this correlation band around here. Around This is a basically a 95% confidence inter interval. And it allows us to, to now we're going to superimpose the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit. And we end up with three zones. Here's what we get at these innermost intersection. Let's let's look at let's look at a cycle integral, say about eighteen thousand. What do we know about that part? Is that a good part? It falls between our specification limits. So we know with a high degree of certainty that that's a good part. How about right down here around 10,000? In, in, in between here, that part may be good. Here's the good part zone. It may be bad. We're not sure. This is what we'd call a warning or a suspect part. And then outside of this zone out here, if we're below 5,000, that part is definitely bad. Okay? Now, the good news is we've got a correlation. We have a measurement that predicts part quality. Where do we set our alarms? Well, if your quality, if your quality policy says our quality policy is to never scrap a good part, then we'll set our alarms out here and make sure that we're always containing the bad parts. But that's probably not most of your quality policy. Most of your quality policy say we're never going to ship a bad part to the customer. We're going to set the alarms tight and make sure that only good parts are getting to the customer. We, here's where we set our alarms typically is at this innermost intersection. So the bottom line is now we've got upper and lower alarm limits that allow us to make sure that we're always shipping good parts to the customer. Occasionally we'll get a good part into the reject bin, but if we're running very, if we're building good robust processes and keeping those tight within this zone, then that's the, that's the exception. That's, those are the occasional parts that we either look at or we throw away and we have we have a number of customers who, who use this to make sure they never send a short shot to their customer. Okay? Now, this, <coughs> this degree of, of detail, this degree of data, is used on a handful of molds. We're not going to do this on every mold. This is another part of what we teach is that uh, if, if we're running high risk part, high volumes, then yeah, it makes sense spending all of this time and all this effort to characterize the mold to this level of detail. But we also then we have for 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 your for standard everyday we're not going to go into the nearly this level of detail. What we're showing you is the most sophisticated approach that you can go to for the the high volume applications, the critical applications that need this. What we what we see from having done these studies is that we're able to predict a wide variety of quality defects using cavity pressure. So, oops, 
uh, what we're calling straight dimensions, fairly flat parts. Uh, pressure, cavity pressure pred uh, predicts these dimensions very nicely, so the cavity pressure cycle integral. We're able to detect texture in a part, the, 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 um, the, the how deeply we've packed material into the texture, the, the texture imprint, uh, cap the, the cavity pressure time to peak, the amount of time it takes to pack the, pres the cavity out. For complex dimensions, uh, shorts and sink, a lot of uh, warp and uh, orientation, um, optical properties are driven by stresses in the part. We see correlations there. For thin wall parts, the correlations are a little bit different. Bottom line is there's, there, we have a, we have, now we've got a, a, a really solid data-driven approach to allow us to determine which cavity pressure measurements predict part quality and to set effective alarm limits using data. So to summarize, DOE is a very powerful tool, something we see our customers using uh, went at, at, at its worst, we've got, we get a lot of confusion, misleading results. Uh, these can be very expensive, and uh, it can be used to avoid fixing real problems. But at its best, when it's done well, we've got a systematic tool that we can use to improve quality, reduce costs, find and fix problems early, talking about here at the end, set meaningful process alarms, and all of this fits in really nicely with quality systems, with, with uh, ISO, QS, and we're seeing m most specifically in medical. Uh, our, our medical customers are using DOE much more than any other market segment in large part because the, uh, the, the, the FDA guidance has uh, mentioned, mentioned DOE specifically as a tool. And some, some, we have a number of medical customers who use different versions of DOE for every process that they build. Uh, and of course, there we need a strategy to make sure that we don't want to run the same huge experiment on, every, on, a, on an easy part. It, that's not cost effective. So a lot of what we work on is developing a strategy for effective implementation of DOE so we're getting benefits, uh, the, 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 the right benefits out of, out of our experiments.